All right, let's look at part two of chemical reactions. We're going to start looking at skeleton equations and how we can write skeleton equations. So I've just got practice, um, practice ones up here because a skeleton equation, it's not going to be balanced. You just really need to remember how to name molecules or how to write the formulas from the names of molecules and compounds. So if we look at what we've got here, we've got aqueous sodium chloride and aqueous silver nitrate react to form aqueous sodium nitrate and solid silver chloride. So we've got to do this out step by step. We start with the first one here. We've got aqueous sodium chloride. Now, we need to remember, is it ionically bonded or covalently bonded? Nowhere does it say disodium or trichloride or monochloride or any of those things, which is a pretty good indicator that we're dealing with an ionically bonded um, substance, in which case we need to use our periodic table to look up the oxidation states. So I start with sodium, I look it up on my periodic table, and sodium is 1 plus. Then I look up chloride or chlorine. Cl is 1 minus, which means that plus and that minus cancel each other out. So I can get rid of them, and now I've got sodium chloride. Okay, but I need to remember to put the state on there. These are aqueous, so I put an aq with that. It's a q. Then it says and, which means plus, aqueous silver nitrate. So I put down silver, and I look silver up on my periodic table to find the um, oxidation state, because nowhere on here does it say silver dinitrate or mono silver. There's none of those prefixes, which means it's probably ionically bonded. I need to look it up on the periodic table. So I find sil uh, silver on my periodic table, and I see that silver has an oxidation state of 1 plus, and then I look up nitrate. Now, nitrate is one of those that you just need to remember, or if you have the resources to find it, such as on the opposite side maybe of the periodic table, we've got NO3. If we look up nitrate, nitrate is NO3 minus 1. So 1 minus those two, the plus 1 and the minus 1 even each other out, so we're well on our way. Now we need to remember this was an aqueous solution, so we've got to put the AQ there. And then react to form, which is the arrow. And I'm going to run out of space, so I'm going to switch down to um, below my equation here. But generally, this would all be written out on one line. Reacts to form aqueous sodium nitrate. So I remember that sodium is Na. It's got a 1 plus. We looked up nitrate before. NO3, 1 minus. Those two will even each other out, which means I can get rid of their superscripts. And I need to put in that it is aqueous, so AQ. And solid silver chloride, so I put in a plus for the and. Solid silver chloride, silver was AG, and it had a 1 plus. And chloride was 1 minus, those two will even each other out, so I can erase that, and then I need to show that it was a solid. So this is my skeleton equation. Now, it may or may not be a balanced chemical equation. We won't get to that until part three. The skeleton, we're just drawing it out so that we can eventually move into balancing those. Let's look at another example. Again, here's the resources that I'm using. Uh, this periodic table is right off of Wikipedia, um, and then the common polyatomic ions there is from uh, the Montana Tech periodic table that they've given us to use in our class. So let's look at a second example. We've got solid aluminum and hydrochloric acid react to form solid aluminum chloride and hydrogen gas. So right away we're drawing out solid aluminum and this throws up a red flag to me because now we have an element that's all by itself here. And whenever we see an element by itself, we need to think back, is this a diatomic element? In other words, does it have to exist with another one? Does this have to be Al2 or not? So in order to re remember that, we've got to go back to our periodic table and remember, well, which ones are the diatomics? I'll try to keep my lines as neat as possible there. Those are the diatomics. There are one two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. And they make the number seven 
sort of, plus you've got hydrogen lingering out there on the other side of the periodic table. So those are the diatomics. In other words, anytime you run into nitrogen by itself, it has to be N2, or oxygen has to be O2, or fluorine, F2, and so on and so forth. So you always need to check for the diatomics to make sure you've got them correct. So let's go back here. We had aluminum solid. Now, aluminum was not one of our diatomics, so it can exist all by itself. Then we've got hydrochloric acid. You just have to remember the naming of acids. HCl is hydrochloric. And in part one, we learned that all acids are aqueous, which means we have to label this as an aqueous solution. Okay, then it says... These react together, react to form. That's a good indicator that we've got a reaction line here. And we've got solid aluminum chloride. Um, aluminum, it doesn't say mono, di, tri, so it must be ionically bonded. We've got to look them up on the periodic table. Aluminum has an oxidation state of 3 plus, and chlorine has an oxidation state of 1 minus. So we know that aluminum chloride has to be Al. Cl3 so that these two can even out. Let me go ahead and erase these. And then we've got hydrogen gas, so plus hydrogen gas. Now this throws up a red flag again. We've got an element all by itself in this hydrogen over here. So we go back to our periodic table and we need to look up, okay, is hydrogen one of those seven diatomics? And yes, hydrogen is so hydrogen won't live by itself. It has to be H2. This is a skeleton equation. It may or may not be balanced. We'll get to balancing equations in part three. All right, one last one, and this is going the other direction. We've got sodium iodide, potassium nitrate combining together um, to make potassium iodide and sodium nitrate. And actually, we'll do four examples. If you're getting these down, you can just sort of fast forward through them and check your answer. If you're still struggling, then stay with me here. Um, I'll work through them a little more quickly. Sodium iodide does not say mono, di, tri, any of those things, so it must be ionically bonded, which means I need to look up each of the elements on the periodic table to find their oxidation state. We've got sodium Na is 1 plus, and iodine is 1 minus, so those two even each other out. We've got NaI. Then we need a plus sign for the potassium nitrate. Um, and actually, let me go back and clean some things up so I can include the state. So this is aqueous plus potassium nitrate. Potassium is K1 minus. Nitrate is NO3 minus. Those two will even each other out. And it says this is also aqueous. So those two react to form. And I know I'm going to run out of room, so I'm just going to put the arrow and I'm going to start again down here at the bottom. I've got potassium iodide, so I've got K, which is 1 plus, and iodine, which is 1 minus. Those two are going to even each other out to make Ki. And then I've got my plus here, sodium nitrate, Na. Look up sodium, it's 1 plus, and nitrate, NO3. Again, that's for me on the back of my periodic table. You need to remember the polyatomic ions. And this is 1 minus. Those two will even each other out. This is the skeleton equation for that reaction. One more. Again, these are the tools that I'm using on each of those. I'm not clicking back and forth because I'll lose a lot of my writing on there. Um, but make sure you have these. Your periodic table you need to have with you at all times. And then the polyatomic ions, I would have a chart um, with those with you at all times as well. One last one here. Again, this is methane and oxygen. Methane is what is a natural gas. Um, if you're working in a chemistry lab, odds are your Bunsen burners are running on methane if you have it tapped into, the, say, the city line. You need oxygen for that to combust. You get carbon dioxide and water. If we write out the skeleton equation for this, we get the following. Methane is one you, I'm sorry, methane is one you may have to look up. It's CH4, and this is a gas combined with oxygen. Now we've got an element all by itself. Anytime we have that, we need to remember, is this a diatomic? Now look up oxygen. It is one of that seven over here, which means it has to exist as O2. It says it's a gas. Then we've got carbon 
dioxide. I don't need to look that up on here. The dye tells me it's covalently bonded, and the dye tells me there must be two. We don't ever have to put mono in front of the carbon. It's just assumed. So we've got CO2 gas plus H2O gas. Now, if you're working ahead on these and you understand anything about chemical equations, this is a good skeleton equation. We've done what we set out to do for drawing skeleton equations. The problem is this is not a balanced chemical equation at all. We have four hydrogens on one side, we have two on the other. We have one, two, three oxygens over here, and two oxygens over here. So in part three, we're going to figure out how can we take reactions like this and turn them into balanced chemical equations. So good luck!